In this video, I'll show you how to dynamically combine data from multiple Excel tables. So we have these three tables here. One row in this table, uh, this table has about 26 rows, and here we have uh, seven rows in the third table. You could have more tables later on, your data could grow, it could shrink, it could change, and I'm going to show you how to consolidate this, but here's the first thing. Really, you should never even do this in the first place, because if it's the same data set, you should keep it all in one table. Don't split the data into multiple tables, and you're probably asking why. Uh, well, the reason is, is because it's so much more difficult to analyze the data. If you want to pivot this data, it's split across different tables. It's really all the same data set. Um, and if you want to do other things, charts or whatever it is, pivot charts, there's so many reasons why the data should all be in one table if it is really the same data set. Now, I know a lot of people like to split it across different uh, sheets or different tables for data input, so everyone has their own sheet, or maybe it's because they like to read it this way, different regions or different cities. But really, it should all be in one table. Uh, it's much easier to analyze that way. So. If you are stuck, and if you really need to combine the data dynamically, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Now, the easiest way, which I don't mention here, is just copy and paste. Create a table, uh, remove, just clear the rows, and then copy and paste all of these rows into that table. That is by far the quickest way Then you'd be done. Now, it's not dynamically linked, but it, it is much easier. So let's now look at this way. This is the easy way. Get and transform, otherwise known as Power Query. Uh, we can do it relatively easily. You don't have to know everything about Get and Transform. It's just a few simple steps. So here are the steps. I'm going to walk you through this. Now, you'll notice on the side, if I go up to Data on the ribbon, I click this, so I turn it off. Now I'll click it again, and you see this little thing on to, off to the side, but I'll show you here. I've already, for Table 1, which is here, and Table 2, which is here, I've already uh, created the query uh, in Power Query, right, or Get and Transform. So I'll do that now for our third table. So the first step, and these are the steps that you see here, the first step is to do this. Click anywhere in the table, click Data on the ribbon. If you're over here, just click Data, click From Table Range. This is now going to load it into Power Query. We see it just a few seconds. Now I'm going to click here. You can't click up there. You have to click the drop down and say close and load to. And I'm going to say only create a connection. So watch what happens now uh, when I click this. It's going to sort of create this little query and now we're done. Now these are all small tables. It might be uh, more if you had more data. But now we've got all three of our tables loaded into queries. And the, the next step is to say, okay, well, I want to combine it and display it over here. So uh, once again, click data on the ribbon, get data, combine queries, and we're going to append them. That's like stacking them together vertically, sort of like building blocks that kids play with. So we click that, it's going to load, and it says append. Is it two tables? No, it's three or more. So I uh, click, shift, and click, click add here. We want to combine the data from all three of those tables. They could have different names like sales or region or whatever, but in this case, just the default table one, two, and three. Click OK. This will now create a query that combines it. And we don't have to do any additional steps. Uh, later on, I'll show you a link to a course that I'm going to take uh, to learn more about Power Query. Uh, but this is all we need for now. We'll just scroll through and we see that we have the data. I'll move this up a little bit. And then once again, we don't, want to, we don't want to click this part. We want to click right here in this little drop down. Click that, close and load to. And now we're going to say, uh, ex where do we want to put the data? Existing worksheet. I'm going to click this and say C16 right there. Click that and click OK. Now it pulls in all the data. So we have all of those rows from all three of these sheets. If our data changes, if we get more data or less data, uh, we just have to refresh it. Now, if there's another table, uh, if you create a blank sheet and another table like this, you just have to repeat the steps that, it, that I showed you to create the query for that table and then uh, put it into this final step here, and then it gets pushed back into this sheet. So that's how to do it with the get and transform. That is basically this method. Now, I created a way to do it with formulas uh, just to prove that it's possible 
but it is exhausting. It's actually easier to combine data split across sheets if it's not in a table, if it's just in a normal range where you don't see the design up here in table tools at the top. But in this case, we have tables, so we have to do it uh, now with formulas, and I'll walk you through that. I'm not going to show you all these formulas. You see how some of these formulas are very long and complex. Uh, later on, I'll create a post, and you can download this to look at it. But let's just walk through the steps of how this works. So step number one, what we want to do is in your, see if I remove this, then everything sort of blanks out because of an if formula. So look across here, and there should be hopefully one field that has the same name across all your tables. So we just type that in here. I'm going to put data like this. And the second step is this. Right over here, uh, in this primary table, we have one row that's dummy, and then we have table. We just type in the table names, whatever the, the name is. So let's go over here to Sheet 2. I'm going to click Design. This is the name of this table. It's called Table 2. So we have to type those names in. If you get more tables, you simply go here and type in Table 4 or, you know, uh, Miami, Florida, or whatever the name of the table is. And this will expand. These are formulas. They will expand automatically, and then it will pull in more data for you. So our next step is step number three, and maybe you don't want all the fields. So over here, you could just tell it uh, the, the field names for the data that you want. So we're pulling in, in this case, all three, all three fields into our consolidated table here. Now, as this guy is saying, this is quite complicated. That is very true. Um, but let's look at this. How do we know that we have all the data? So if we scroll down here, uh, if we just do some simple counting, we know that we're missing some data. But luckily, I have some formulas off to the side. If uh, you'll see, this is going to change here. Uh, it will tell us how much we're missing. So expand this table by five rows. That means that we're missing five rows. So we scroll down here. And I'm just going to take the bottom right-hand corner of this table. There's this little button here. Just drag it down. I'll drag it down a little bit too far until we see the errors. Then we know that we've gone far enough. So we come back to the top. And now this guy is telling us uh, all 34 rows have been retrieved. Can I sleep now? Uh, so this is definitely a much harder way to do it. And it's so much easier uh, doing it this way with get and transform. So finally, this is the course, this Power Query Academy by Ken Poles and Miguel Escobar. Uh, I'll show you right here. This is the address, and I also have a link here. It's an affiliate link, so I might earn a couple of dollars if you click on this or the one down here. But this is the course that I am going to take. I will make sure, somehow I will make the time and sign up uh, while I still get the discount and uh, learn much, much more about the hottest new tool in Excel, which is Get and Transform, or formerly called Power Query.